So it's pretty much standard protocol for most photographers to post their photos on Instagram in the 4x5 format. The main reason for this is that it takes up so much more space in the feed than posting in landscape. In fact, Instagram really doesn't cater to landscape photos very well. The smaller screen space they are given in the feed means that your photos can be missed or underappreciated. For this reason, people tend to post their photos in a 4x5 frame, either cropping landscapes down or splitting them into a few pictures that can be scrolled through. But say you don't want to do this. The photo might just not work when split, or you don't want to post a carousel. Are you stuck with posting it and accepting the limited screen space? Not necessarily. My name is Josh, and today I'm going to show you a technique that can work with certain photos to turn them from landscape images to 4x5 portraits without cropping and losing any of the details. So first of all, this technique works best if there is a basic background like the sky in the photo and a fairly basic foreground like a uniform grassy field. So it doesn't work for all images. So today I'm going to use this photo of an amazing rock formation situated just off the Scottish island Staffa. This photo is perfect for this technique as it features the sky quite predominantly, which will be easy to work with. The sea foreground will be a bit trickier to work with, but with some trial and error, I'm sure we'll get it to work. So let's jump over to Photoshop and we'll get started. So first of all, I'm going to create a copy of the main image on a new layer by clicking Command J or Control J in a PC. This will mean I always have the original in case I make a mistake and need to refer back. Then I need to set up a 4x5 canvas as this is what I want the dimension of our finished image to be. To do this, I'm going to select the crop tool and then input a custom crop of 4x5. Now instead of decreasing the area of the image, I'm going to extend it so that the whole image can safely sit within this rectangle. I'm going to position this one so that the rock is as close to the center of the rectangle as I can. I don't need to worry about the edge of the photo too much either, just as long as the rock is within the center. That's good. So hit enter when happy with the selection. Now I have the required dimensions with empty space at both the top and bottom, which I'm going to fill in. But before I do that, I'm going to quickly tidy up a few wee bits that I don't need in the image with a spot healing brush. This small rock at the side and this one down at the bottom too. Hit J in the keyboard for the spot healing brush and just click over what you want to remove. Okay, so now it's time to fill in the spaces. I'll start with the sky, which is by far the easiest thing to do this technique with. So if you're trying this technique for the first time, maybe try and find a photo that has a sky like this one. So now if I select the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle over the space that needs filled in. Then go to edit and then content aware fill. Now this is really cleverly going to fill in the space I have selected using the original image as a reference. This green part is what the software is going to use as a reference, so we can add to that by painting in more of the image. Or if it's chosen a part that we don't want it to copy from, hold an Alt, then draw over the green to remove it like this. In this case, it's selected exactly what I want, only the sky, so I'll just fill that back in. Now all I have to do is hit OK and give it a minute or two to render the effect. And there it is, it's created a new layer with the original image and the new sky. Now I'm really happy with how this has turned out. Maybe the only thing is the cloud here might look a bit weird, so I'm going to fill it in and make it a bit bigger. For this, the clone stamp should do fine. Hit S on the keyboard to select it. So I'm going to select part of the cloud to copy by holding down Alt, then clicking on it. Then I'm just going to draw in some more cloud above it. This is pretty much always trial and error, drawing some and undoing if you copy over too much or a bit of the wrong thing like I did there. I'm happy with that and before I move on I'm just going to rename this layer and then I'm going to do the same for the C which is likely to require a bit more work after the content aware fill as it's a bit more of a textured area than the sky. Now this time I'm going to make sure to select an area with the rectangle tool that includes some of the C on the original image. You'll see why in a minute. Now go back to edit, then content aware fill. 
You see this time that it's selected the rock as well as the C, which we definitely don't want copied. So if we hold down Alt, we can begin to paint away all the green covering the rock. Okay, so I've gone a bit far at a few points, so I'm just going to decrease the size of the brush and just paint back in the sea around the edges, being careful not to draw on the rock, and if I do, just removing it again. That looks good, so hit OK and let it work its magic. Now that's pretty decent, but not quite as ready to go as our sky. If you notice, there's this harsh line here where the original image ends and the fill begins. That's why when I selected the empty area, I went a bit over and filled over some of the sea as well, as I can fix this by mixing in the filled layer in the original image. You do this by adding a mask to the new layer, then select the brush tool and start painting over the mask with black, which will reveal the layer below it. You'll want to use a fairly soft brush for this. I've gone a bit far at some point, so I'll need to draw this back in. Hit X on your keyboard to switch the brush from black to white and start drawing the space back in. This is blending the original image and the filled part much better than before hiding that harsh line and making the whole image seem much more uniform. So let's do the same for the other side. Now that's much better, it's starting to look more cohesive. However, this part here is bothering me. It doesn't look that natural. The light pool of water has been extended too much. I'm going to try and fix this by making another small content aware fill just over this small part. Same again, just delete the parts you don't want. In this case, I don't want it to copy any of the light water as this is what I'm trying to get rid of. Okay, so I'm not too happy with that. It's got a bit of the rock in the water and it looks a bit messy. This can happen sometimes. Not to worry, I'm just going to undo that and try again and be a bit more careful with my selection. Now that's definitely better. It's almost there now. The last thing I'm going to do is try and get the brightness of this filled part to look more realistic. It's a bit dark at the moment. To do this, I'm going to add a curves layer and add some brightness to certain parts. This has added it to the whole image, as you can see, so I'm going to click on the layer mask and invert it by clicking Command and I, which will remove the effect. Now I'm going to select the brush tool and draw in with white the areas where I think it needs to be brighter. Now I can go back to the curve and tweak it some more. A bit extreme there, but this is just trial and error, moving the curves about, drawing in more of the mask or less is required. But with some work you'll get something you're pretty happy with. For the sake of this tutorial, we'll call it there, but when you're working on your actual photo, try and be as detailed as possible, but also keep in mind that people won't notice slight imperfections, especially on Instagram. So there you go. That's how you can turn a landscape photo into a portrait one without cropping. Just remember that the simpler the foreground and background of the image, the easier and the better this will work. If you're giving it a go yourself or have any questions, Leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. Also, feel free to tag me in an Instagram post. My username is josh underscore Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.